Hello, is this thing on? Yep. Almost two months later, still waiting to hear from the editor. The Waiting Game, <laughs> episode 23 of Horrible Writing. That will that never, never work. work. You can't, can't push, push us. us. Seriously? No, 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 that's no, 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 Oh my god, that's good. You're too bad. You, you probably, probably should find a hobby. You ever, you ever learn how to spell? Stop. Stop. Be happy. Quit with your ego. Don't bother me. I've seen better than me. Do you really want to shoot me? And grow up. Get up. Get up. Welcome to Horrible Writing, the rawest, most candid, in-your-face writing show on the interwebs because none of us have time to suck. Let's do this. All right, hey everybody, Paul Sading, your host of Horrible Writing. I hope this finds you absolutely well. Again, if this is your first episode of the show, welcome. Awesome to have you here. So, this is going to be a quick episode because I'm being needy. And I'm going to admit it. Forever ago, okay, that may be a little hyperbolic, but a while ago, I submitted my first submission ever to an editor, and I'm still waiting. And I'm waiting actually longer than he said I'd have to wait. And because it's my first um, submission to an editor, I'm kind of struggling with how you proceed. And I'm not going to go direct to my author associates online and ask them for their advice. And I'm probably being, again, needy <laughs> because it's the first time. And I know uh, I had a wonderful conversation with him. I understand what he's going to do and what he's trying to do, and we both understand that I'm a first-time author, and that's going to present some things in the timeline may vary. Usage may vary, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I get it all, but again, for especially for those of you who are brand new to the show, I launched this show in July of 2017. You can read the blurb for the show, uh, Know Nothing Author, on his journey towards, you know, being becoming published. And I'm going to document this stuff as I go. And if it's, you know, significant enough that I want you to kind of live vicariously through me with, right? So we've got great support out there. Writer communities can be very, very healthy. They can be. And this is my one little way to contribute back to the community, if you will, and, and try to help people learn through my experience. It's not all about woe is me or, or yay celebrate me or anything like that. It's it's me trying to help you see what I've gone through as you prepare for your own journey. You'll probably do it better and smarter than I did. Not that this wasn't smart. This editor, uh, his sample work that he gave me for the first chapter was absolutely awesome. I'm very excited to see what he has for the rest of the book. And he comes from a very highly recommended source. The person, the author that I got his name from has used him. She's published 30 books. She's, you know, somebody I respect highly. So that wasn't a factor. Plus, you know, so her recommendation, the sample chapter that he gave me and the price he quoted me were all right in the ballpark of what I expected and what I hoped for. So The thing is, is that as writers, what I want you to take away from this is that these things take a lot of time. I don't know. Okay, so I'm not, maybe three years from now, I'll have an episode on how this happens. But right now, I don't know how authors can do a book every month or two or even three months because I've been waiting for this to come back for about that long. So, Well, it's not, it hasn't been three months. I'm not going to say that, but it's taken long enough to get this back. And then I need to go fix all the stuff that he's going to identify that's broken. And this stuff takes time. And I'm not just sitting there waiting for this to come, right? So in the meantime, 
I've written the entire third season of Subject Found, 66,000 words, first draft. I'm sure it'll change. My producer for that show is hoping it will. And I've edited a season of Diary of a Madman. And I've gone deep into the second Subject Found book. So it's not like I'm sitting there waiting for this thing to come back. And all along the lines, I'm still taking my book, The Scales, my manuscript, The Scales, to my writer's group to see what they have to say and, you know, live that experience of working a novel chapter by chapter with a writing group, with people, human beings, live and in person before I go to beta readers and and such. So... I'm working a number of things to keep this ball moving forward, but you know, it's been long enough now where it does make me curious as a planner, you know, how do you plan these things out when you've got this gray area, they give you a window, but the window, you know, it may not be definitive as definitive as you thought. So your plans have to be able to flex a little bit, something for you to think about as you're planning out, you know, the year ahead or the next three books or whatever it is that you want to consider. And then uh, on top of that, the artistic element, being a writer, being as sensitive and as needy as we are, you know, (laughs) when somebody quotes you a timeline and it gets busted, especially since it's an editor, that's when you a professional editor, that, that's when you really start wondering, hmm, am I really that bad of a writer? Does he really have that much that he has to think about, fix, etc.? in what I submitted to him? And then trying to continue, you know, writing without that little voice floating around in your head something I hadn't anticipated. I fully anticipated handing over that book, telling him, here you go, go make me look like I know what I'm doing. And then it coming back in the time that we said it was going to come back in. And my own personal issue of checking in with him when we clearly said, Hey, we're going to You're going to go off and keep writing. I'm going to go off and edit your writing and we'll come back. We'll reconvene when it's done. That professional courtesy. He's a busy person himself, right? So all of these things are combating against each other in this decision tree of mine. Your experience may vary. It may be completely different or slightly different or, you know, somewhere in the, in the middle, but it is something I wanted to share with you real quick in this episode because I feel it's important for you to think about. Susan K. Quinn often talks about, you know, having that five-year plan. This is something now I'm starting to understand a little bit better when she says that, how it applies to me and my experience. Because there are going to be things, even as someone who just wants to do the self-publishing thing, because I want to drive it. I want to be in control of my things. I want to be in control of the process, what gets published, what doesn't, when it does, how much attention and love it gets, instead of depending on a small publishing house or, you know, even the larger ones that don't seem to be willing to really invest in authors. I want to share that, this, this experience with you because of that, because if you're a planner or not, it's something for you to learn from from my experience. So that's, that's kind of like the lesson of this episode. And it's also the horrible writing experience. Not that this guy is horrible by any stretch of the imagination. As a matter of fact, unless something catastrophic happens in the back end, I'm going to tell other people about him and hopefully he'll work with me on the second book. And I'm going to almost take it as a challenge to try to finish the second book first draft before he gets that back to me. So I can do a couple edit it edits and get it off the beta readers and then turn around and get it back to him as quickly as possible. Just saying. (laughs) That's just how I work. You know, it's just 
these neat little tricks I use to keep pushing myself forward uh, and keep motivating myself. Not that I really need it, but it's always fun to do that for me. If that stresses you out, don't do it. <laughs> promise. Don't listen to me. All right. So a horrible writing experience and a uh, topic all in one. If you enjoy this show, I do ask that you head over to any podcatcher that you use to get it. And if it has a rating system, use it. And if, for those of you who use something but have access to Apple Podcasts, formerly known as iTunes, please consider a couple seconds to log into that account and or pull it up the app on your desktop or your laptop and give this show a five-star rating. And the the those of you who have wonderful hearts, leaving a review for it as well. I need help having the writer community find the show, and I'm asking you for that help. If I do or say anything that helps you, the only reciprocity that I ask for is that, that you, you know, uh, hook me up with a wonderful glowing five-star and or five-star and review for the show. All right, next episode, I have the one and only Susan K. Quinn coming on, and we're going to talk about some very personal, interesting stuff and how she uses meditation to help her writing process. So until that time, until that episode, until next week, from me to you, keep being epic. This has been Horrible Writing and hopefully after this episode, you suck less than you did at the beginning. I am Paul Sadin, your host, Extraordinaire. You can find me over on the Twitterverse at Writing Horrible and over at paulsadin.com forward slash horrible dash writing. Until next time, suck less. Suck less.